sharp dress pencils. Me and ZZ Top like our sharp dress pencils. And if you are an artist, you might have asked an artist the question, how did you get your pencil so sharp? Because in my videos, sometimes I zoom way in so you can see the tip of the pencil or whatever tool I'm using. And almost every single time I do that with pencils, I get somebody asking, how do you get your pencils so sharp? And I'm going to share with you my favorite pencil sharpeners, my go-tos, and kind of when I use them, and especially a pencil that I think you might be interested in because it is the most sharp dress pencil out there. So the pencil sharpener that gets the most attention is the AFMAT, or at least the pencils from it get attention. Those are usually when I get questions. And this does not get your pencils actually really sharp. It just gets the long point of it made. And it weakens the pencils. So if you don't have much wood holding the lead together, it's more likely to break. So don't use it with soft pencils very much. Inside, they include a square of black sandpaper. And that's for refining the tip of it because this does not get your pencils actually all that sharp. It doesn't get them laser sharp like some other sharpeners will. So I use it in combination with something else because taking that little drawer out, every time you want to use that little black sharpener thingy, it just makes a mess everywhere. You get little shavings all over the place. So hand crank it and you get a really nice long point. Works great for harder pencils, just don't use it too much with shorter, but that tip isn't really sharp. And there are things that will get it sharper. So I take one turn in another sharpener rather than opening this uh, canister up and I can get the tip to be sometimes not perfectly formed, but it is really sharp. I can get that little tip, even if it looks ugly, to be really sharp for like really fine details on textured paper. Now the doll sharpener, which I showed you, is my workhorse. I have several of these all over the place around the house and I just love them. And they have a yellow cap on them, not just loving it because it's yellow, but because it means I can find it. A lot of my other sharpeners aren't findable when I want them and this one is always around. And any sharpener is going to need replaced or the blades replaced at some point. If it has a little screw in it, then it means that you can get new blades for it. This one has two holes in it. Some two hole sharpeners are just so you can sharpen thick pencils or thin pencils. And some of them are two steps. So they want you to refine the wood with one and the tip with another. But this one just does two different size points. And you can see here, there's a little difference between them, but the short stubby points, even though they're gonna be really sharp, are safer for not having much breakage because you don't have a lot of lead showing without being held together by the wood. I got this General's All Art Sharpener because I do charcoal and pastel and those are really hard to sharpen well. And this does a really nice job of it, especially when you have fresh blades in it. They come in both a little rectangular thing separately or in this little round canister. You can get it either way. And it works really great for all pencils, but I especially love it for, as I said, my charcoal pencils because then they don't break like crazy. And you can you know, watch the little shavings happen with the clear case on it. And it gives you a pretty reliable, sharp point. But this is much sharper than that AFMAT. It just doesn't look as elegant because it's not a really long one. Now, the Blackwing calls itself a long point sharpener, and it's a one-step sharpener. I love this thing because it feels so good in my hand. I usually keep it in my pocket when I'm going out and I'm going to be sketching somewhere because it just, it feels really good. It's not gonna leak anywhere and it's just one step sharpener. It gives a good reliable sharpness but doesn't work really well with thicker pencils. So your Karen Dash pencils are usually a problem in that. Just a couple of twists in it and you can get a really nice, sharp, uh, reliable tip on it. It's not the sharpest tip, but it's really good and reliable. And this one makes a really, it comes in a nice gift box. So it's a nice present to give. Then we have the one that I just love, but I hate at the same time, the Mobius and Rupert three hole sharpener has three holes in it and it has no casing. So it's gonna make a mess, but you can see it's got the little screw hole thingies in it. So you can replace all those blades. 
And the reason it has three holes is because it does three different things. And you might think that's too much science for art. Like who needs to refine a point that much? Well, one of the holes is going to give you more sharpening of the wood. One is going to give you more sharpening of the tip. And the other is going to be an average of both. And you can use them in combination. So first I'm going to show you what each of the three does separately. That one you can see is just the tip. That's just the end of it. That's all it wants to sharpen. And you can refine the wood separately and then put it in there to get that really sharp point. But this hole is for making long points. And you can see because the pencil keeps going, it's going to continue shaving the wood up the pencil. And it has that opening so that the pencil can reach out there and get itself really sharp. And the third one is the one that's basically the average of the two. And that one is just a super reliable, very normal point. And that's just one step. You don't have to use two holes to create that one. So you can see the one on the left is just sharpening the tip. The one in the center focuses on sharpening the wood and leaves that tip hanging out there looking weird. And the last one just does a very normal, super sharp tip for your pencil. So one of the things I'll often do with this sharpener is combine two of them together. I start by refining the wood and then I send it through one of them to make just the tip sharper. And you can e use either of the other two to do that. So get the wood sharpened so that you start getting that really long point to it and then switch to another hole and you can end up with the point on the right hand side with the longer point to it and a, a sharper tip on the absolute point of the end of the pencil. And that brings us to my workhorse, which is a technical pencil, which I call a lead holder. And it's called a lead holder on a lot of websites as well. And they're made by all different brands. I have Kohinoor and Statler in the house. And when you press the button on the back, it releases the claw at the front end. And then you can either extend or shorten the lead. And they come in these packs of 12 leads. This is my 6B from Kohinoor, and those break really a lot, which is why there's not much left in there. And uh, the 4B is what I tend to use much more, and a 2B along with it. So I usually keep a couple pencils around, and I have them in different parts of the house, because yes, I'm a nerd, I draw all over the place. And I don't keep the leads everywhere, because the leads last, you see how, how thick and long they are. They're two millimeter leads. And this is my old sharpener. And I don't even know what brand it is because it's just so old. I had this since college. And look at that pencil point. Holy guacamole, right? And that will happen every single time unless you use a 6B and it breaks. But um, it's, it's just a really reliable sharp pencil. This is the handheld Statler Mars version. And you put your pencil into one of those holes. It'll help guide you so you don't put too much lead into the sharpener. Because if there's too much lead in there, then you won't actually get anything more than a broken pencil. <laughs> you don't want it to be too long. But you can get a super, super, super sharp tip on the pencil. Now, you don't always need a super sharp tip on a pencil. I use regular pencils all the time. But I'm using today some white, white paper by Fabriano. And it is the whitest paper that I know of for drawing on. And it's also really, really, really smooth. There is some texture there. You can see it on the paper where the pencil is working, but it is like almost glassy smooth. It's, it's lovely to draw on and you can use blending stumps and that sort of thing. I like a little bit of texture in mine. So I left it for those acorns. I love how those came out. But in order to achieve that kind of at least consistency, and that's what I'm looking for when I'm drawing is more of consistency rather than trying to make everything photo perfect because I'm not making a photo, I'm making a drawing. And I'll use the 2B and the 4B together, layering them and really, really light pressure. The lighter pressure that you use, the longer your pencils will, will last because you're going to build up in slow layers rather than constantly pressing really hard until it's so dull you can't use it. For this entire leaf that I was drawing, I sharpened both of these pencils just once at the beginning and I didn't have to sharpen it again because I'm using really light pressure and these leads are just lovely to work with. 
So with any of your pencils, your colored pencils or whatever, the more pressure you use, the faster you'll use them up because you have to sharpen them a lot. And that's just going to eat at your lead. But for these, I just built up my layers slowly. Sometimes I would use a little bit more pressure when I wanted an area to get darker sooner, but not very much. And these pencils lasted beautifully throughout the entire leaf in this drawing. You have to have a little bit of patience if you want to use layers, because if you want everything to happen in a few seconds, then you're going to need to use pressure in order to get those value differences that you might want in the artwork. So I recommend just getting used to that. This paper erases really well as well. I used my electric eraser to put the forgotten stem in there and totally forgot where that, that, that little acorn needed to be attached with something and was able to redraw around it using light pressure to match the value of the leaf behind it so it didn't look like there was just a weird shadow inside that leaf. So that is my whole series of pencils and my favorites, which are these guys. This was in my sale recently, and if it hasn't sold yet, it might still be available. I'll put a link to it in the doobly-doo if you're interested in that drawing. And I will see you again in my next video. Hope you have an awesome day, and I hope you learned something about sharpening pencils from this video. Talk to you later. Bye.